Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we are talking winter colors. How to select the right color for the right bait in all sorts of different water conditions. We're also talking about Tactical Bass and apparel and we're talking about river monsters in South America. Today is going to be an interesting video. While you guys have been watching the last few tactical videos, Tim, myself, and a group of some of our closest friends all took off for South America. I bring it up because a lot of you follow us on other social media. And if you follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, you've already seen some of what is going on and what is coming. Uh, as tactical bassin, you would assume we were down there bass fishing, peacock bass. You're not wrong, but we did so much more than that. We fished for river monsters. It was incredible. It'll be a few weeks before we can really get that content together for you guys, but you are going to enjoy it. So a week ago, just a few days ago, we were down there and it was practically summer. It was in the 90s. It was nice. We just got home. It was snowing here this morning. We got zapped back to winter and that got me thinking, what can I do to help you guys with winter fishing because I got snapped back right into it. I got a brief little taste of summer and here we are back in the snow. Now also, while we were gone, Tactical Bass and Apparel landed on Tackle Warehouse. So there's two different versions of a sun shirt, two different versions of a hoodie. The Reaper has the full mask like this, along with the hood for those cold winter days. The shadow, same general hoodie without that gaiter around the neck. The sun shirt, there's a hooded and standard version. They're UPF rated, it's Aftco gear. We partnered up with Aftco. You guys have noticed over the last couple of years that we're wearing more and more and more Aftco. It's just so comfortable. So it was a no brainer to upgrade our gear into some of their really, really popular models and stuff that we're wearing already and it's going to be easier for you to get now. You're not relying on us and emailing and going back and forth. Now you can just get on Tackle Warehouse and get that gear. So it's there for you. Some of the items are in stock. The rest are coming in a few weeks, but you can order it, back order it, whatever you need to do. It's all there and we are no longer the middleman. We're so excited about it. Now, on to today's video. Let's talk color. Over the last couple of months, we started into the winter videos early. So we've covered, you know, jerk baits, crank baits, underspins, different worms, all these different things with every video. If you open the video description, we give you a couple of color recommendations with every bait, but not necessarily an explanation of why those colors. So today I simply want to focus on color. I'm going to give you the basics that I use every day that I build from. And then I'm gonna give you four exceptions to the rules as well. Colors that just flat work that you want to have in your arsenal. All in all, color is very, very simple. My main color in any soft plastics, jigs, bottom contact baits across the board is green pumpkin. Green pumpkin, black flake. If I could only have one color that's it for any sort of bottom contact. It just works. Now, you don't do anything with just one color. Let's face it, we're fishermen. We love to branch out, try different things. So I know you're not going to stay with just green pumpkin, but if you're only going to have one, that is the starting point all the time. Whether it's a creature, whether it's a Senko, whether it's a little worm, a jig trailer, green pumpkin, black flake. It imitates everything. The other colors that really do well for me, just a couple of options. As that water gets murkier, if you get more stain, black and blue. Black and blue is a really, really good option to get a bigger bite and to catch a lot of fish, especially as we get later in winter, start getting that mud in the water, starts getting stained. Black and blue really becomes a big factor. A color like this, 
We have black and blue on one side, green pumpkin on the other. It's just the best of both worlds. If I use it as a jig trailer, if I really need that bright, bold black and blue, I turn black and blue side up. This color, by the way, this is Reaction Innovations color. It's called Tramp Stamp. Black, blue on one side, green pumpkin, green pumpkin, black flake on the other. But if I really want that black blue profile, I've got it. But if I want to soften it up a little, I don't want so much blue. I flip it over green pumpkin side up and it really softens up the entire profile and makes a black and blue jig much more universal. We'll come back to jigs. So we've got green pumpkin and black and blue. The other ones, three more standbys. Some sort of a smoke color, a clear color will get you through that clear water fish. And if you've got really good clarity, finesse fishing, some sort of a smoke, uh, natural minnow, natural shad, those are key colors that will get you through. And don't get caught up on the exact specific color. As long as you've got a smoke color, you're okay in a lot of clear water situations. And then these two, strange colors, but bass eat them. Coast to coast, top to bottom, they eat them. This specific one is called Margarita Mutilator, but essentially it's a purple worm. Bright purple is a key color. As you go into summer, we shift from the bright purple to the darker purple towards a June bug, but purple is a huge factor. And the other one is Morning Dawn, the pink worm. Why a self-respecting bass will eat bright pink, I do not know, but it works. It works bright pink. It works bright pink with a chartreuse tail. Both are dynamite options. Those five colors, so Morning Dawn, a bright purple, Margarita Mutilator is our favorite, excuse me, uh, a smoke color, green pumpkin black flake, and a black blue you are set. Now there are so many other colors, you could argue a hundred different colors, but I'm telling you, if you have those covered, you can do anything. And if you just want one, green pumpkin, black flake every time. Now back to jigs. If I could only go one route with jigs, it's going to be brown and green pumpkin. That is my go-to. Actually, it's ironic that my favorite color is called go-to and it is literally brown and green pumpkin with some sort of a green pumpkin trailer on it and you're set to go. Now, when I branch out from there, the two directions I go are towards purple, that color super matte brown that we talk about all the time. It's essentially that same basic color, but with a bunch of purple and cinnamon in it. Going the other way, if that water starts getting really murky, again, black blue then depending on how murky you adjust that trailer it's really that simple now there are all sorts of colors again there's oranges reds all sorts of different things they all work but if you want to keep it simple keep it simple hard baits in winter specifically i focus entirely on the clearest colors that i can get away with you guys noticed in our crankbait when that came out, almost all of the colors are ghost. Almost all of them. That's not by mistake. The more ghost, the better. The only time we get away from that is when that water starts getting really murky. That mirrored minnow is one of my favorites. Same thing with jerk baits and other hard baits. Those really clear, those pro blue type colors are dynamite all the way through winter. Again, we don't lean to the solid tones until you start getting that murky water, say less than a foot and a half of visibility. Now, if your lake is always less than a foot and a half of visibility, you can still get away with clear colors. It's only when the water is murkier than normal on your lake that you need to go to those solid tones. It just seems like in that cold water, when you're slow fishing, snapping those baits, getting those reaction strikes, the times where fish have more time to look at the bait, that the ghost colors do better. 
swim baits almost always lean to the natural tones. If I could only have one color to go anywhere in the country, it's pro blue red pearl. That's a Kitek color. There's no question. That's always my starting point. Now, there are a couple of exceptions. I'm going to talk about one of those. The other one is electric shad. I've told you when we've got shad in the water, electric shad absolutely smashes. But if you don't know what you're fish are eating, or you're going to a new lake, or you're just not familiar with your conditions or what the bass should eat, Pro Blue Red Pearl works everywhere. This is really just about keeping it simple. Now, here are the exceptions. I'm going to give you four colors that are just standouts. First one is a crankbait color. As we near the end of winter, as we start making our way into spring, it becomes more and more of a factor. It's that ghost red. In our crankbait, it's called blood craw. It's a ghost red, brown back. It's got some orange splattering on it. That brown orange, or excuse me, that brown with that red is key. I have so much confidence in that color as we get later in winter. So critical. Couple of spros. You know, going shallow, throwing a little John, going deeper, throwing a rock crawler. Those ghost red tones absolutely load the boat late winter into spring. It doesn't necessarily fit the, the norm, the standard, but if you want something that just gets them, it gets them. Next, chartreuse and blue. In a Kitek, in a Bastrix, in any swim bait, it's not the norm, it catches fish. And it catches them everywhere. It catches smallmouth, spotted bass, largemouth, catches them in muddy water, catches them in crystal clear water. What's interesting is that it seems to work the best at both ends of the spectrum. So we'll catch them when that water's muddy on chartreuse and blue. And then we'll also catch them when you have 25 feet of visibility, when it's truly crystal clear. It works so, so well. If you want to mix it up this year, if you want to try a different color, build confidence in something else, chartreuse blue catches big fish and it is overlooked by most people. Two more. Go into soft baits here. That Smalley Smasher, we talked about this color this fall and I'm going to read it to you because it's such a long name, but it's this beautiful combination of green pumpkin with those blue pearls. It's the best bluegill imitating soft bait color I've ever seen. It's called GP, green pumpkin I assume, GP Orange Black Pearl Blue Flake. How's that for a name? But that Smalley Smasher in that color is insane. They did such a good job with that color. Come springtime, when the bass are chasing bluegill, that color will be next level. Last but not least, it's a robo worm color. It's called Desert Craw. We throw it in the Ned Worm a lot. Tim started preaching about this color probably three years ago, two and a half years ago. It's a almost a motor oil red mixed with a bright orange. Not my standard color at all. But I have watched Tim catch them in the southwest in the desert. I've watched them catch them in the northeast. I've watched them catch them in the Great Lakes, in the south. Everywhere we go, that color catches them. I finally started throwing it too because his confidence was so high and it just plain works. So again, we've got the standard green pumpkin, black and blue, purple, pink, morning dawn, and then some sort of a smoke. And again, you can mix tramp stamp where your green pumpkin and black and blue, it'll do both for you. It's awesome. But if you want to try some things that are different, there are some exceptions to the rule that are dynamite. You know, we have been going in depth all winter, teaching you guys the fine details of each pattern, but I really didn't explain why each color. When do you go to the murkier water colors? Or excuse me, when do you go to the solid colors? Murky water. When do you go to those true ghost colors? 
clear water. Why do I start with green pumpkin? You know, it's just that all around color. It just gets bit in every situation. So we just wanted to give you those details that would really help you streamline it and then throw you a couple curveballs because bass fishing is supposed to be fun. And when you find a color that just flat catches them, go out there and catch them. Guys, this is going to be a fun year. We are so excited. We had a blast down in the jungle. We are so excited to share that with you in a few weeks. We're so pumped that the apparel is finally up and out there. We fell in love with tactical or with the Aftco gear a couple of years ago. Being able to do that with a tactical logo for you guys is a dream come true. It's easier for you. You're not waiting on us while we're traveling and shooting video. And it's a dream come true for us because this is the gear that we've fallen in love with and now we get to wear it with our own logo on it. It's awesome. So guys, it's going to be a fun year. Thanks for coming along today. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.